Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I'm really excited just to share a little bit with you guys today. Um, and the Lord is just really putting on my heart to just open up and be vulnerable about um, just kind of the things that I'm facing right now. And I think that the things that I'm doing in order to kind of like help myself get through it are the things that I just want to encourage you guys to be doing and trying out as well. Um, and not to say that I'm getting myself through this mess that I'm going through because like the Lord is getting me through this, but there are things that we can do, um, like practical tools and things like that. And just, um, ways that we can be way more intentional to find hope and joy and peace, um, in the midst of the struggles that we're going through, whether it's a waiting season or you're going through a trial, um, like me right now, yesterday, I just, I had a massive breakdown, I'm not going to lie, about just everything with my chronic illness, um, and I've also been having this infection that I mentioned before, um, in the bone in my skull, and it's causing, like, a lot of pain in my ears and things like that, so I've only been off of antibiotics for about 10 days, and I'm already experiencing pain again, which means the infection is already progressing again. Um, I was supposed to wait two to three weeks um, before starting the next round of antibiotics without pain, ideally, but the pain has come back so quickly, like even sooner than two weeks. So I was just feeling super overwhelmed and feeling stressed. Like in this situation, there's literally nothing that I can do to progress it. Um, so yeah, I guess this video is just for, you know, when you're feeling stuck, when you feel like you're in this slump, when you feel like kind of powerless and um, I know for me personally I experience a lot of anxiety and stress and something that I do when with my chronic illness it tends to be like I kind of go along like oh I'm okay I'm okay I'm okay because when you have chronic illness like you're always facing pain you're always facing stress and you're always facing those things so you kind of have to learn how to just manage along with it right but a lot of the time, at least for me, I know it's like I'm managing, I'm managing, and sometimes I'm doing pretty well. So sometimes it's not even just like I'm managing. It's like, okay, I'm thriving, I'm thriving. Some days I'm managing, some days are not so great. And it's very up and down. But I find like in the spots where I'm like thriving and then even like just managing, a lot of the time that means for me that I'm just kind of like tamping down my emotions and I'm not actually taking the time to like process them and allow myself to feel them because I'm a very I'm a very sensitive person and I'm an overthinker so emotions are very big for me and when I really let myself like feel my emotions I can have a very hard time coming out of that so I know for myself I think it's almost like a guard that I have is where I'm like okay I'm not gonna let myself feel it but then oftentimes it's like when I'm going through something difficult and just not allowing myself to feel the hard feelings then I end up coming to this breaking point, which is what happened yesterday. So, and I really wasn't expecting it. Like I thought I had been doing a pretty good job trying to like track things and I was trying to journal and take time to process things. But I think a lot of it, you know, I'm human and anxiety is a very real thing. I'm also living, you know, in lockdown right now and, you know, on a stay at home order and all of these things. And there's just a lot of stressful things. So I wanted to come and chat about that. Yesterday, I had a rough day, and thankfully, I have an amazing husband, and he uh, he actually got off work early yesterday, which was perfect timing. I think the Lord knew that I needed him uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, so, yeah, I cried a lot. I had a great, well, actually, did I nap? I rested a lot. Like, I just, I needed to shut down my brain. I get very overstimulated and, like, overwhelmed. So, for me, I just needed some, like, silence. I needed some time without any screens like no phone no tv nothing um i just needed to relax and i was exhausted and today i slept in um which my body definitely needed and i just want to talk about some of the things that i'm going to do going forward today um for the sake of my mental health and my spiritual life so that's what i want to chat about with you guys so Today, some things that I'm going to do. First of all, the thing that I intentionally did today is sleep in. I know not everybody has the freedom to do that. Some people have little kids. Some people have jobs that they have to be going to. Right now, that's not a part of my life. So, I mean, I do have the freedom to sleep in when I need to. Um, I would encourage you guys, though, if you're in a situation where um, you don't have, like, you don't have another person there to help you out or things like that, where am I going with this? What I was going to say is ask for help. 
if you have a spouse or somebody and you also have little kids and you need a rest, like try to ask for help, you know, and express your needs. Because if you can't express your needs, your partner can't meet your needs and they can't read your mind, right? And sometimes you're just feeling overwhelmed. And I know when I'm like that, I start like snapping sometimes at people. And then it's like, okay, wait, I have to express my need. So Johnny understands where I'm coming from and he knows why I'm getting frustrated right now, right? So express your needs, ask for help if you need it. Um, you know, and it just express the need for a break. And if it's you just like as a single person, I know it can be hard sometimes even to rest. Like we often just guilt ourselves for resting or not being productive or things like that. But give yourself permission to rest. Even if it means, you know, you look at the clock and you say, okay, for the next two hours, this is time. It's me time. It's time for me to rest. But don't just do whatever you feel like and waste the time. Like be intentional about that time. So maybe the thing that you need right now, like, Try to process like, okay, how am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? What are my needs in this moment? Um, that's something that I'm trying to do. And then depending on your answers, kind of gauge what you're going to spend time doing. Um, I always recommend spending a bit of time like in prayer, just seeking the Lord. If you haven't been in your Bible, spend a little time in your Bible. Um, just process how you're feeling. Talk to the Lord. Ask for peace and comfort and guidance and all of those things. Um, because that's just going to get you further spiritually and mentally I think than anything else um, if you need rest take that time maybe you're gonna have a nap maybe you're gonna go have a relaxing bath maybe you need some silence or maybe you need some time out in nature and away from I don't know your thoughts or your current home environment maybe you're in lockdown and you're having a hard time go get some fresh air you know go on a walk in the forest even just go on a walk around your neighborhood um, if you want to block out the noises, sometimes I put in headphones and I listen to just like calming worship music and things like that and I go for a walk and just kind of get out of my head a little bit. Um, I personally really love taking baths, like an Epsom salt bath and light some beeswax candles because um, non-toxic and, uh, you know, reading a good book, um, something else too, focusing on hydrating. Um, Maybe what works for you is that you just need to take a nap and you need a break and you just need to get some sleep. That's cool too. Maybe uh, just reading even a fiction book and getting lost in a different story for a little bit and getting out of your own mind. So these are all things that I know for me personally can help. Oh, another big one is stretching, especially if you're somebody who is um, very stressed or if you have a lot of like pain in your muscles, if you get headaches, things like that, or if you have chronic illness, stretching like morning and night is something that really changes the game for me and I notice it when I don't do it. Um, so yeah, one more thing I just want to touch on and this is like, it might seem slightly unrelated at first, but I have been doing my Bible reading plan and I just kind of finished reading the story of um, like Joseph. Joseph is in the one with the multicolored coat. Um, so Joseph got sold into slavery by his brothers, which is wild. And he was in slavery for about 12 to 13 years and then he was actually wrongfully imprisoned. For two years um, and accused of rape which I think is really it's just wild and the whole time he's in there he still shows such compassion for the other prisoners and then when he comes out he even has such compassion um, on Pharaoh and he interprets his dream and then God blesses him greatly and gives him this great new position and he's able to like provide for his family and be reconciled with his brothers and you know something that just has been on my mind a lot is that Joseph went through like 15 years of suffering and of you know just pain and harsh circumstances and he still the whole time he was in there and even when he came out all we see is him glorifying God and I just think that's such a beautiful thing and that's something that God has really put on my heart these past um well the past week or so as I've been reading about his story and just reflecting on it is that like I want my story to look a bit more like Joseph's in the sense that like as soon as he gets out of jail, he gives glory to the Lord. Um, you know, he says, it is not in me, but God will interpret this dream for Pharaoh. And he just immediately gives God the glory. He's like, you know, this isn't about me. And I just, I think that's incredible. Even after 15 years of struggle and hardship, he gives God glory. <laughs> Um, and later on, we also see that when Joseph is blessed with children, um, the names of his, his children also mean God has made me forget all my hardship and God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And, you know, that is just kind of my prayer to be able to pray those prayers um, 
and truly mean it and um, be able to say, you know, God has made me forget my hardship. And right now, sometimes my hardship seems like the biggest thing in my life and it's hard to move on and focus forward in hope. But God has put this like unshakable hope in my heart these past few months and it's been terrifying if I'm honest. It's been terrifying to hope. If you have a chronic illness, you probably get this. It's scary as heck to hope for healing sometimes because you've been through disappointment after disappointment after disappointment and doctors after doctor that doesn't care or blows you off or doesn't understand. And you know, it's very hard when you're in a situation where hope feels terrifying. But you know what? The hope that we have from the Lord brings us joy. And, you know, I just want to be more like Joseph and I want my story to be a reflection of God's glory. And, you know, even after the struggles that I've been through and um, the suffering that I have faced, I want to be somebody that is compassionate toward others like Joseph was. And I want to be somebody who immediately gives God the glory, that's always talking about God's goodness and that is using the things that I've learned and the struggle that I have faced to grow closer to the Lord and to help others grow closer to the Lord in their times of struggle. So I'm sorry this video is a little scattered. I hope it's okay and I hope you guys can understand it and follow along. Um, I would really encourage you guys to check out the story um, of Joseph. So whereabouts does it start? I could write it in the description, but it's around, I believe, Genesis maybe 38 or so, um, that it starts, but it's just, it's just a really good encouraging story. And if you're going through a time where you really just need to learn how to hold on to hope and also how to just hold on to hope and take care of yourself in the midst of it. Cause like I said, we always see these things about, you know, progress and success and healing. It's not a straight line. It's very much like this, right? But how do we handle this part? You know, how did Job handle all the suffering he went through and all the loss that he had? And it's like, you know, we see that he gets his blessing later on and that's wonderful, but how did he handle this part? And how did he handle the low lows? And that's what I just, I just wanted to chat about that and encourage you guys. These are the kinds of things I do in my low lows and don't be afraid to run to God with your raw, real feelings because God can handle your God can handle your cries, he can handle your regret, he can handle your feelings that you don't like to talk about because they scare you or you think that they're going to scare other people. God can handle it and he wants to know your heart and he wants to heal your heart. And you know, the more we spend time ignoring and pushing down our feelings, the more healing we're just making for, you know, the more healing we're going to have to do later on. Hurt people hurt people and if you aren't intentional, intentional about processing your feelings and your pain and taking them to the Lord and allowing him to heal you and teach you through those things you're going to go around spreading that hurt to more and more people and you're going to just put more and more hurt in your life and build up more and more walls so I just I really want to encourage you guys with that today whatever it is you're going through whether it's a, a waiting season or prolonged trial or struggle I just I want to encourage you guys to take hope in the Lord. And even though hope is scary, you know, I'm here for you and I will encourage you. And, you know, I just hope we can be together through these struggles and encourage each other, um, you know, to find our peace and hope and joy in the Lord and know that the Lord has so much purpose in the pain that we are going through. And, um, you know, maybe I'll talk more about the story of Joseph later, but even later on when his brothers are feeling bad about what they did in selling Joseph into slavery, he says to them, you guys didn't send me here, God did. He had a purpose for it, don't feel bad. I wanna be like that, you know, to the point where you go through so much struggle that you literally say, don't worry, don't worry about the fact that you put me in slavery for the last 12 years and that I was wrongfully jailed for two years. It's okay, you shouldn't feel bad because God had purpose in this. That's how much we should glorify him. And I just wanna encourage you guys with that today. And if you guys need prayer about things or you want to chat about um, the things that you need to hold on to hope for and the things that you're going through, please comment below or um, reach out to me on Instagram or Twitter. I would love to chat with you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day.